Hi guys and welcome. Today we are going to create these cute little knobby pumpkins. I used the two double crochet bobble stitch to make these cute little bumps. They are supposed to look similar to the knucklehead or knobby pumpkins that you see in the stores that have kind of like the little bumps and warts on them. This is the size small, this is the size large. They're really cute, worked in the round. What you will need, so the pattern calls for wool ease thick and quick, which is a size six super bulky yarn. The samples I have here probably worked up slightly larger than the originals, but I tried this fluff of the Andes wool yarn and I really like how that turned out. So this is Wool Roving Yarn by We Crochet. This color is called Caution, and this color is called Solar Flare Heather. I really like the texture that it gave these pumpkins. Just be careful when you're weaving the ends in and creating the ribbing because it breaks very easily. If you've worked with roving yarn, you kind of know that. So just be really easy with that and they'll turn out great. So what you will need is an L eight millimeter crochet hook, a tapestry needle to weave your ends in, a pair of scissors. We're working in a continuous round, so it's helpful to have a stitch marker to mark your rounds. And then if you wanna check your gauge, you'll need a flexible measuring tape. It's not that important, but it's helpful. You need to maintain a nice tight stitch so the filling doesn't show through. Um, some kind of sticks of your choice. I just grab sticks that I find laying outside and I just wash them and let them air dry. And then any kind of embellishments you want, some twine to tie um, a bow, some ribbon maybe. I wanted these kind of like spooky for Halloween and I got these cute little tags. So you can add these little embellishments. I'll link where I got these below. They're from an Etsy shop. I get these leaves from the shop as well. Those are really cute. And then you'll need a glue gun to glue the stems in place or some kind of glue and then a little bit of polyfill. So I'm gonna get set up and we're gonna work on the size small today. Okay, so I have my yarn out. I'm using the color pumpkin and the woolly thick and quick. So we are gonna start with a magic circle, which is also called a magic ring. So leave a tail long enough to weave in the beginning tail, wrap it around your finger twice, insert the hook under both loops, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then chain one to secure that circle in place. We're gonna do 10 half double crochet in the circle. So yarn over, insert your hook into the circle, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the three loops on your hook. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through three loops on your hook. So we wanna repeat that for a total of 10. So we have four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, you can kind of pull your beginning tail closed. And then we are going to do an increase round here. We're gonna work two half double crochet in each stitch around. So be sure not to miss that first stitch. So we're gonna work two half double crochet in that. There's one and there's two. And we're gonna mark that first stitch of the round. So the first stitch was this one. Okay. And then two half double crochet in the next stitch. Two half double crochet in the next stitch and repeat that all the way around for a total of 20 stitches you'll meet up here at this marked stitch. Okay, I finished round two. The marked stitch is our next stitch to start round three, so go ahead and remove that. Round three is another increase round. We're gonna do 
one half double crochet in the first stitch. Again, go ahead and mark that. Okay, so we did one in that first stitch, two half double crochet in the next stitch, one half double crochet in the next, two half double crochet in the next stitch. So repeat that pattern all the way around for a total of 30 stitches. Okay, so I just completed round three for 30 stitches total. Go ahead and remove that stitch marker. Now we're gonna start working even around the sides. So the first round is gonna be a round of single cro crochet. So insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops. Go ahead and mark that. And we're going to continue to single crochet all the way around for a total of 30 stitches. So just single crochet in each stitch. So I'm gonna complete that and then the next round will be when we start those bobble stitches. Okay, so the round of single crochet is complete. You'll notice that your work is gonna start curling inward. That is actually inside out. You wanna make sure that you push the sides out like that. As you're working along, you want your work to be facing you on the outside. If it's curling inward, it's facing you on the inside and that's inside out. So go ahead and just push it like that. And after you finish a few more rows or rounds, it will kind of stay in place better. Okay, so you can go ahead and weave that tail end in anytime you want, just get it out of the way. So remove that stitch marker. This next round, we're gonna start the bobble stitch. So we're gonna single crochet in the first two stitches and then bobble in the third stitch. So go ahead and single crochet in those first two stitches. Mark that first stitch. It's very helpful on these next rounds to mark this because we kind of stagger the bobbles and it makes it a lot easier to find the start of a new round. Okay, so we're doing a two double crochet bobble. So it's a really, really tiny bobble, but I wanted it to just have these really slight little bumps, nothing too big that stands out too much. So what you wanna do is yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops on your hook. So you'll have two loops remaining. Okay, and then we're gonna do one more of those. So yarn over, insert your hook into that same stitch that we've been working in, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops. You'll have three loops left on your hook Yarn over and pull the through the remaining three. Okay, and then we repeat that all the way around. So a single crochet in the next stitch, a single crochet in the next stitch, and then we do the bobble. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert your hook, Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over and pull through the remaining three. Okay, and then you just keep doing that all the way around until you have a total of 30 stitches. So when you do a bobble stitch, they have a tendency to pop out on the opposite side of your work. So normally the opposite side of your work ends up being the right side, but for this pattern, since I want them so subtle, we are just gonna use our fingers and kind of pop them out as we go. And then once we put the filling in, they'll pop out a little bit more because we just want them really, really tiny like that. So let's do one more bobble. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, insert your hook, Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over and pull through three. OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna keep going around and I will meet you back here for the next round. Okay, so the first round of baubles is complete. You can just kind of push them out with your fingers. And this next round is just a round of single crochet. So in between each bobble round is just a round of single crochet in each stitch. So go ahead and mark that again. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish that round. You'll have 30 single crochet total. As you're going with the single crochet, when you get to the bobble stitch, before you complete the single crochet, push it out pretty good and then single crochet kind of tightly around it and that will help hold it out a little bit better. And just continue that all the way around. Okay, so that single crochet round is complete. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that stitch marker. So on this next round, we are staggering the bobbles. So we want a bobble kind of in between the two bobbles. So we're working it a little bit different than that first bobble round. So first we want to single crochet in that first stitch. That kind of gets us where we want to be. Go ahead and mark that stitch. Okay, and then the we're gonna start a repeat. So we're gonna bobble in the next stitch that same two double crochet bobble we've been doing. Okay, and you can see that put us right in the middle between these two bobbles. Okay, and then two single crochet. Okay, so we're gonna repeat the bobble and two single crochet all the way around this round. And once we're complete, it's gonna leave us with two stitches left in the round. You are going to um, bobble in the second to the last stitch and single crochet in the last stitch. I'll go ahead and complete this round and meet you in those last two stitches. Okay, so we completed our last repeat, which was a bobble and two single crochet, and we only have two stitches left. So we don't have enough to complete this repeat portion. So the last two stitches of the round is one bobble in the next stitch and then a single crochet in that last stitch. So again, we started the round with a single crochet, then we started the repeat portion, which was a bobble and two single crochets all the way around. We were left with two remaining stitches and we added the bobble and then the single crochet. Okay, so now we're back to that beginning chain, or sorry, that beginning stitch. Remove that stitch marker, and here's another single crochet round. So create the single crochet, mark the stitch, and then just single crochet all the way around for a total of 30 stitches. And then we have one more bobble crochet round left after this before we start decreasing around the top of the pumpkin. Okay, so we're on our last bobble stitch round and you can see this bobble and this bobble. So we want another one right here so they kind of stagger. So on this round, it's a bobble in the first stitch Mark that stitch. And then two single crochet in the next two stitches. And then you repeat that all the way around. So a bobble and two single crochet. And you repeat that all the way around and you will end back to this marked stitch. You don't have any leftover stitches at the end. So repeat that. And then after this round, you're gonna do one more round of single crochet. And then we'll meet up and start those decrease rounds. Okay, so we completed that and we're gonna start the decrease rounds now. You can see those bobbles are very slight. You can kind of see them poking out from the inside. Just kind of push them out. 
Once you put the filling in, they'll push out on their own too. And then when you create the ribbing, they'll show as well. Okay, so go ahead and remove that stitch marker. So we are going to do a single crochet in that first stitch, mark it. And then in the second stitch, we're going to do a, an invisible single crochet decrease. So for that, you insert your hook in the front loop only. So this would be both loops. This is back loop only, and this is front loop only. So you insert your hook in that front loop only, and then you go into the next stitch and insert your hook into the front loop only, yarn over, pull through two loops, and then yarn over and pull through two. Okay, and then we're gonna repeat that. So a single crochet in the next, the invisible single crochet decrease in the next. So under the back loop, or sorry, the front loop, and then you kind of twist your hook and go in the front loop of that next stitch, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two. So we just repeat that all the way around. until we have a total of 20 single crochet. And then we'll do one more round of decreases. Okay, finish with that one. This next round is a round of invisible single crochet decreases all the way around. So you go right into that first stitch and create that invisible single crochet decrease. Mark that first stitch again and then repeat that all the way around. You'll have a total of 10 stitches. And just keep going. Okay, this is our last round and then we're gonna cinch this pumpkin up and create the ribbing, okay. So on this one, I do go ahead and join with the slip stitch to that beginning mark stitch just helps uh, close that circle a little bit better. Okay, so then you fasten off. I actually barely have any yarn left. I almost ran out. But anyway, fasten off and you need probably, I would leave about two feet. This might be a little more than I need, but about two feet because we're gonna be doing all the little uh, ribbing around. So you need a good amount. So first we wanna stuff the pumpkin So there should be room, yep, there's room. So I've talked about this before in my other pumpkin videos. The key is you want the pumpkin nice and firm without it being too tight to where it stretches the yarn like that and you see the poly fill through. So I think I need a little bit more filling here. I think we're almost good. That feels pretty good. Okay, you can see the filling kind of helped push those out a little more. But like I said, it is supposed to be subtle. Okay, so first take your tapestry needle and then we're gonna weave the top in and out to cinch it closed. So I go under both loops like that. So you go from front to back under your first stitch and then back to front under the second stitch and you pull the yarn through. So I think my tail's a little bit long, but you keep doing that all the way around. After you've done a few, you can pull that end through. I usually go back through the same ones that I've already done a few times, just to secure it a little bit better and then you go ahead and pull the cinch closed. So right now you can leave an opening 
for your stick. Or if you want, you can pull all the way closed because once we do all the ribbing and stuff, it does push the center down and you can just glue the stick right on top like that. But I'm going to attempt to leave a small opening. Sometimes when I do the ribbing, the opening kind of closes up on me. Go under here one more time. So I think I want to use this stem. So that should be good. Okay, so for on um, for these pumpkins, I like to create six ribs total. One, two, three, four, five, six. So when you do an even amount, it's really easy to calculate where you're putting the ribbing and get it nice and even. So take the yarn and go down the side. I try to push it kind of between the, um, the bobble stitches instead of right on top. So I kind of put my yarn there, insert your hook in the center opening on the bottom and push it back through the top and then pull tight. You can pull as tight as you want. I like nice and tight ones, but you can keep them looser too. Okay, so then I go on the opposite side and that leaves two nice even sections for you to get nice even ribbing. So then go to the opposite side, I'll put it on this side. Again, kind of try to place it between the little bobbles. Again, push your needle through the bottom center, back up to the through the top. So I got a piece of yarn. You kind of put it in place before you pull tight. Okay. You can see my center is kind of closing, but I still have a little hole for the thing. Okay. These ones we're going to kind of guesstimate a little bit. Probably about there and here. Actually, I think there. Okay. So again, between the bobbles. And you just work all the way around until you have six ribs or as, as many ribs as you want. Okay, and then we're gonna go about right there. If you decide to use that roving yarn, this part can get a little bit tricky because that roving yarn is really sensitive to breaking. So if you can't get it to stop breaking, you can skip this part with the yarn and said fasten the yarn off after you censor the top closed and you can do the ribbing with some twine with this same method. I also have some yarn recommendations in the written pattern. Tape yarn is another one I like to use. It breaks kind of easily so be gentle if using that one. But I definitely like tape yarn and I offer several other recommendations. If you're using a five, size five yarn, you'll wanna use two strands held together. Okay, so that's the last one. Okay, just make sure it's even. It doesn't have to be perfect, but that's what you have. This is what the bottom looks like. Okay, and I have a small opening left. And then you just want to weave your tail in to secure it in place. I kind of wrap it around that top where it's nice and tight first. And once I have it in place pretty good, I usually go down the side. Don't pull tight, just A little bit. You don't want to pull tight and cinch this portion up. Okay, then I just go around the bottom a little bit more. Let's do just one more time. You can tell how tight this is, so it's not going anywhere. And then you just fasten off. 
and there's your pumpkin. This is the bottom and this is the top. So just kind of shape it and then glue your stick in place. I think that'll hold for now until I glue it. And then you can use the twine and put some ribbon on there. If you're using these leaves or these little tags, I usually tie them on with twine and then create like a little bow. You can see what I did with this. And you're all set. So the full written pattern is free on my blog, which will be linked below. All the supplies are linked. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know. Have a nice day.